Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, nope, these are not your typical canines. In fact, they are wolves. Why there is a sanctuary dedicated to them. Manatees are slow moving gentle giants of the sea. And most people believe that they're fat and lazy. Our Inspector Planet is looking for answers. I've been here for three nights waiting to see them eat cheeseburgers. I just don't get it. How are they so big? Go and stay. Teaching your pet the important skill of just hanging out. This and much more straight ahead on Animal Outtake. domestic canine like Zeus here might be a distant relative of wolves, it doesn't mean that they're alike. As we recently found out, wolves have a demeanor all their own. There's a big bad wolf who lives in the big Fairy tales make wolves out to be cunning and sly characters. Nothing you would trust, right? Here at the Shy Wolf Sanctuary, they specialize in rescuing wolves and wolf dogs, a cross between a domestic dog and a wolf. We've been brought up to know that a wolf is a wild animal, mm -hmm. of course, versus our domesticated dog. But there's, there's some very distinct differences in their personalities. I mean, you call yourself the Shy Wolf Sanctuary. Why? Because there's this prevailing concept that they're aggressive or they're going to chase you or hunt you because of movies and, and fairy tales that we've been raised to read, you know, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> and the real fact of the matter is, is all these exotics, wolves in, in particular, live in what we call their adult stage of mind. Um, the mammals go through the same stages of development that we do, neonatal, transitional, socialization, adolescent or juvenile and adult. And what we've done over tens of thousands of years is we've kept those dogs in that juvenile stage. We've done the inbreeding and the line breeding and created certain traits where they're dependent on us. They want to come to us for food, for shelter, for direction. Even the canines look to their handler for tracking, trailing, or apprehension. They don't do it on their own. They need us. They need us. The wolves, on the other hand, will do it on their own. And they, they look for shelter, they, they know how to survive. And even if they've been bred in captivity for years and years, they still have that instinct and they still function in that adult stage of mind. So if you're thinking about getting one of these animals, you know, that animal could be an adult child living at home with you, basically, is what you're dealing with, is you're trying to get them to do certain things you want them to do, behave in certain ways you want them to behave, but you have no, no way of telling them, yes, you're gonna do this. Oh, here we go. It only takes one to start the choir. What's amazing is they all end on, at the same time. Do it's like a conductor cuts them off, and it's never more than two minutes. That's why our neighbors, we don't have issues with our neighbors, is it's not like the dog barking all the time like he's doing right now. And it's only infrequently during the day. How's my indigo girl? How is she? Oh, there she oh, is. Sweetheart. Oh, there's my Indy, Indy. Now she might get freaked out with you as a stranger, but this is our blind wolf, Indy. Miss Independence, she's 13 years old. And even though she's blind, she's still runs around and she may her see holes. some shadows that yeah, will help her may. a little bit she mm -hmm. may hi baby girl hello mm -hmm. kisses yeah. oh my goodness oh, sweet baby buying a wolf dog can cost a couple grand the volunteers here at shy wolf sanctuary say you never really know what you might get and that's why many animals end up here laws vary from state to state on whether you can even own a wolf dog and just looking at the animal may not give you an accurate picture of how much wolf or dog they may be. Now, DNA can help solve the puzzle. 
DNA's come a long ways in a few years. So now we do have DNA on, we just did it on all of our animals here. We were fortunate to be able to do that. We were participating in a study with University of North Alabama student drawing blood and while we did that, we did our own swabs for DNA mm -hmm. and tested our animals. So now we have a better idea if our guessing abilities, which is called phenotyping, actually correlates with what the DNA says it is. And we were pretty far off on some yeah. of our animals. So this is, this is Jasper that you see back here. And you see how he's pacing now that we're in yes. here? This is why we're called Shy Wolf, is because he was, he was sold as a wolf dog. We got him in as a wolf dog, as a puppy. And when we did our DNA testing in May, he actually came back as a full wolf. So he's the opposite end of what we usually see, which is usually we see low to no content wolf sold as wolf dogs, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much dogs sold as wolf dogs. But he, he actually is the real deal. And you can see how long his legs are, how narrow his chest is. He's got the straight face and nose. He's got the oblique eyes right over there. He likes to come on that side of the house and peek at us. Um, he, if you watch when he's trotting, his back leg lands where his front leg is, so the gait is really important in evaluating these animals. If they have that wolfy gait where their back foot lands where their front foot was, that's very efficient for them because they come from areas where there's snow. And the snow, you know, breaking through the snow with four feet is a lot more work than if the back foot lands where the front foot was, it's half the amount of work. So we need to clarify that he is anxious not because of his habitat. Because there are strangers in of, here. A sense of people within his habitat. People within his habitat that he doesn't know. Now how old is he? He's just over two years old. Well, he's a baby. Yeah, and they grow until they're at least two years old. So. He's just now coming into his full size because they still are generally growing. But he is coming closer. Every round he's making, he's coming a little bit closer. And they want to know about us, but they just can't quite trust us. I don't blame them. Then we met Indy, a 13-year-old wolf who has vision loss. She was seized by Florida Fish and Wildlife and brought to Shy Wolf when she was just a few weeks old. The test came back 95% plus. Um, we think she's probably a full wolf, but her, two, her dad is either her uncle or her grandfather. So that's how we created dogs. Mm -hmm. So that could account for the 5% or less that is coming back mm -hmm. as dog. Hi, baby. She, you have a spatial energy for her to come right up to you because new volunteers, it takes them a long time. Oh. She's the one I told you is so shy generally of the three that were raised the same. Yeah. Indy's the one that normally would not come up to strangers. You're a good girl, baby. Yes, and you're beautiful too. Just so beautiful. Indy has a good life ahead of her, she, albeit she's a little handicapped. Yes, she has an amazing life here. She digs her holes, we fill them back in, and then she has something to do the next day. I would say you're well trained. Yes, we are. You have been so gracious to us. We have seen every animal here, and of course the wolves, the wolf dogs, and so on. We have yet to see any stress. There is no stress here. How do you accomplish that? Well, it's about the animals for us. You know, we're here to take care of them, make their lives as good as possible. We have as big a habitat as possible. We provide foot tubs for them to cool off in. If they don't want to interact with people, we don't force them to interact with people. The moral of the story? While fairy tales are make-believe, everything we learned about the animals here is real. You gotta come up and say hi to me. Yeah. Let me kiss this. Let me kiss this, yeah. Let me kiss this. Well, good girl. The timber wolf, or gray wolf as we call them, was one of the first animals put on the Endangered Species Act when he was signed into law in 1973. Today, there is talks for the gray wolf to be taken off the endangered species list. 
Stay with us. Inspector Planet with Dr. Tracy is coming up next. I've been watching these guys all day, and all they eat is lettuce. I know if I eat lettuce all day, I don't get fat. I don't get it. You can be sure your furry friend continues to be loved and cared for even when you can no longer be there for them. Dante's Den provides a permanent loving home for dogs whose owners have set up a lifetime care program for their beloved companion. We honor the trust placed in us by providing loving care, spacious dens, on-site veterinary care, and plenty of room to run and play. For more information, go to dantesden.org or call 844-DANTES-DEN. Dante's Den, continuing the love. People have asked me what it'll cost to restore all the corals back the way they remember. But I have to ask them, what will it cost if we don't do anything? Every dog deserves a lifelong loving home. Dante's Den provides a pristine, comfortable haven for dogs that have been abandoned or surrendered by their owners. We ensure that every pup in our Joyful Dogs Adoption Program receives lots of love and attention, is properly immunized, spayed or neutered, and is in good health. Prospective pet parents undergo a thorough adoption review to ensure a lifetime of love and care. Find your new furry best friend at Dante's Den. For more information, go to dantesden.org or call 844-DANTES-DEN. Dante's Den, continuing the love. Science is everywhere and it's all around us. It's observing the world forming questions and the willingness to find the answers. It's something our Inspector Planet does every day. And you can too. Hi, my name is Dr. Tracy Fanara, an environmental engineer. I use different scientific disciplines to protect the environment, humans, and wildlife. At Moat Marine Laboratory, I use investigation and myth busting to solve problems. Hundreds of years ago, explorers would go out into the open ocean for months at a time. They would see slow-moving, graceful, beautiful figures underneath the water. This is where stories of mermaids started. What they were probably seeing because of the reflectance of the water were 1,200-pound manatee. There's a story about an explorer named Christopher Columbus who said he spotted three mermaids. He described them as, quote, not half as beautiful as they are painted. I might beg to differ with Columbus on that one. Manatees are pretty darn cute, but when you see them side by side, one big difference you notice is their size. I've heard it before, manatees are fat and lazy, but are they? This experiment should be a no-brainer. Come on, more than a thousand pounds? I wouldn't call that in shape. Let's find out what they eat. I've been here for three nights waiting to see them eat cheeseburgers. I just don't get it. How are they so big? Manatees are mainly herbivores, meaning they mainly eat plants. I've been watching these guys all day, and all they eat is lettuce. I know if I eat lettuce all day, I don't get fat. I don't get it. As you can see, manatees don't really look like girls swimming around in seashell bikinis. They look more like, well, they are mostly related to elephants. As we can see, they have very movable mouths as they eat their lettuce, just like elephants do if you look at an elephant eat. Also, they have fingernails on their forelimbs, just like elephants. In addition, they replace their teeth constantly, just like elephants do. 
which is pretty amazing that such a huge land animal is related to such a huge ocean animal. So if their size isn't a result of what they eat, what could it be? Well, after some more research, I discovered the answer. Well, it turns out that most of the manatee's body is actually not fat at all, it's intestines. In fact, their intestines are so long, it's the length of three school buses. And actually, manatee have such little fat on their body that they can't stay insulated in cold temperatures. They have to move up and down the coast of Florida to warmer weather, so they're not lazy either. And manatees have to eat. And they eat a lot, which takes work too. A manatee usually can put away about 10% of their own body weight. That would mean that Hugh and Buffett here would eat about 120 pounds every day. Just like you can teach your dog to sit, you can actually train a manatee. So no, they're not lazy at all. They actually respond to cues like colors and sensory cues. Remember guys, anyone can be a scientist or an engineer with some passion, hard work, and an innate curiosity of how the world works. Sadly, it is humans who pose the most threat to manatees. Their big bodies don't move fast enough when they have to face off with a powerboat. Manatees can swim about 15 miles an hour in short bursts. They usually prefer to glide along in the water at about five miles an hour. Come on, Zeus, get up here. We need to do the next story, Zeus, Zeus. Luckily, Tips and Tricks is coming up next. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Your last chance for 2018 Honda Civics on sale is now. During our model year in sale, try new Civics for just $169 a month. You made Civic the best-selling compact car in America. And now get Civic, a KBB.com's best buy of the year for less than the competition. New Civics, just $169 a month. Your last chance for Civics, all on sale this week at your local Honda dealer. The following message is brought to you by Mesobook.com. People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free at 1-800-777-1366 or go to Mesobook.com. Oh, come on up here. Come on. A well-trained and behaved dog is so important. Zeus, come here. It just makes things a lot easier and safer for both you and your pet. Zeus, and that's where training comes in. This week's tips and tricks, we learn the important skill of stay put. Stay put. As you know, Jesse, up here at Dante's Den, we have Dante's Wellness Clinic, and one of the criteria that we do for the exam is, let's get the dog on the scale and let's get a good reading. Yep. Do you know how hard this is? <laughs> how do you do this? How do you train them so that they're relaxed, they're comfortable, and they get on that scale so we can get a proper reading? So we have a command that we call place, which is basically get onto anything with boundaries. So you can use it at the vet, to get on the scale. Most people use it at home to get onto a bed, get onto a bench when they're out at the park, get onto a stump if they're out in the woods. Basically, it's get onto this thing and hang out there until I release you, um, just like the scale. And they listen? Yep. Yeah, it's just like anything else, right? So we show you how to do it, right? There's some kind of reward going into getting on the place. So now getting on this thing is a positive experience. Then we show you you have to. And just like in the calm or when we're walking on leash or whatever, if we show them that they have to do it at home, at the vet, at the park, then they'll do it anywhere. Place. So if you're going to use some apparatus at home, mm -hmm. you want to have a special one, not necessarily 
a bed that they would jump into all the time, perhaps one bed that's segregated that they know that they have to go into, or do we do carte blanche? So it really depends. So if you do the same bed all the time, you can send your dog there from anywhere in the house. I know when you say place or get onto your bed, that's always my bed, just like when people have one crate in their home. Um, from a lot of my clients will use multiple places. They have one by the front door, so they're not right at the door. They have one over by the couch, so they're not right on the couch when they're watching TV, and they have one by the dinner table, so they're not begging. So it really doesn't matter if I point to anything and I tell you to place on it, you have to get on there. Is that kind of like time out? Um, it can be. Some people will use it like that. A lot of people with puppies will use it. They get really crazy or I can't watch you right now. I don't want you to have an accident. I don't necessarily want you to go in your crate. Hang out here. For more training tips or to have a trainer work with you and your dog, log on to the TheUpbeatCanine.com. Coming up next. Now if we were to have a first aid emergency box, which you've been kind enough to give to me over the years, what should we have in there? And tell us why a Band-Aid doesn't work. At Humana, we believe great things are ahead of you when you start with healthy. And part of staying healthy means choosing the right Medicare plan. Humana can help. With original Medicare, you're covered for hospital stays and doctor office visits when you're sick, but keep in mind, you'll have to pay a deductible for each. A Medicare supplement plan can cover your deductibles and coinsurance, but you may pay higher premiums than you do with other plans, and prescription drug coverage isn't included. But with an all-in-one Humana Medicare Advantage plan, you could get all that coverage plus Part D prescription drug benefits. You get all this coverage for a $0 monthly plan premium in most areas, and Humana has a large network of doctors and hospitals. So call or go online today. Find out if your doctor is part of the Humana network and get your free decision guide. Discover how an all-in-one Medicare Advantage plan from Humana could save you money. There is no obligation and the book is free. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Dr. Greiner, we're always at home when the emergency happens. So what do we do when we see, for example, our dog is bleeding? Certainly one of the most common emergencies we see is a trauma, uh, hopefully a minor trauma rather than a major like being hit by a car. Uh, but if we find that they're bleeding, or they have a limb that they're not weight bearing on, we suspect that it might be broken, we'd follow the same steps that we would for a human. Uh, to control bleeding, uh, we normally would not recommend a tourniquet, but just put direct pressure on it, and uh, preferably with something like a towel that's absorbent. And once you get pressure on it, try not to peak, because when you take pressure off, bleeding starts all over again, the clot that you were forming is gone. So uh, try to keep pressure on it constantly, and uh, if they're bleeding that much, obviously they need to get to an emergency clinic sure. and uh, get that taken care of right away. If uh, we suspect that they have a broken leg, same thing as a human, we try to immobilize it. And again, usually with a dog, just wrap them firmly in a towel or blanket and uh, pick them up and get them to an emergency clinic as quick as you can. Now, if we were to have a first aid emergency box, which you've been kind enough to give to me over the years. What should we have in there? And tell us why a Band-Aid doesn't work. Um, in a word, <laughs> hair. hair. And uh, Band-Aid just tends to pull their hair out. And uh, even if you've managed to get it to stick, they're not very happy when you take those off, as you might imagine. And uh, so normally when we bandage an animal, we try to put a dressing on first and then put the tape over the dressing 
and maybe just catch a little bit of hair at the side or the edges of it uh, to try to get it to stick on there. And uh, we always use things like elastic on or nonstick. Okay. Now another thing that has happened over the many years that you and I have been together and the many dogs that we have taken care of, I call you in a panic. His tooth is bleeding. His tongue is bleeding. Oh my gosh, his ear is bleeding. What do we do? And there's a lot of blood coming from that. And especially if it's the mouth, uh, the, they tend to drool just like we do. And so it is a lot more blood in appearance than there mm -hmm. actually is. And uh, so your tendency is, well, let's just flush that out and give them some water. Uh, no, that just flushes the clot off. And so if they are a good dog like Joey here, again, you can just take an old your rag or something pressure. and just apply pressure directly to it. Now, so many times we will also see they have a bowel movement and oh my gosh, there's blood <laughs> and a lot of it again. What do we do? How much do we panic? Um, it depends on their history. If they have a history of eating things like bones are probably one of the worst things you can give them. Not only does it tend to fracture their teeth, but the splinters tend to wreak havoc on the way out. Uh, then very often we'll treat them just like we would a person that has colitis and that's a little bit of Pepto-Bismol and uh, very often if they've eaten something stupid uh, and we know that it's already on its way through to the colon, uh, I'll usually give them a little bit of burnt toast and uh, just to provide some fiber and by burning the toast it creates some activated charcoal that absorbs toxins on the way through and uh, something with a lot of fiber like whole wheat. So <laughs> as you know I've had one dog jump up and uh, swallow a safety pin and another one swallow a button along the way. I really am very careful that these things do happen. You always told me the burnt toast, and it works. Try to push it through, and if there's any doubt about it, uh, we'll take serial x-rays to make sure it's on its way through and not causing an obstruction. So we should have some of the special bandages that you talk about. We should probably have Pepto-Bismol in our little box. Uh, neosporin, you've always recommended that to, to Topically stop a for little, little wounds. Topical, yeah, and anything else that should be in that. Hydrogen peroxide, because if they have swallowed something, particularly things like rat poison, uh, we need to get that out as quickly as we can. And dose them, call your veterinarian, they'll give you a dose of hydrogen peroxide. Usually within 10 minutes, they'll vomit it up. And then, of course, they will vomit it, and hopefully we should be home free. Thanks, Joey. Stay out of trouble. Great advice from the doc, as usual. We hope you had fun and learned a thing or two along the way. Zeus and I will be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. Until then, thanks for watching. Do we like a paw or massage? There we go. We have a paw massage. And they would look out to the waters and see these beautiful swimming bodies. And they thought, there must be women living in the ocean. <laughs> that is not working. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ah, come on. Let's go. No. Come on up here. Come on. Your last chance for 2018 Honda Accords on sale is now during our model year in sale. Drive new Accords for just $249 a month. Get an Accord, the North American car of the year, for less than the competition. With more standard features than Camry, Honda Sensing, multi-angle camera, turbocharged engine, and more. New Accords, just $249 a month. Your last chance for Accords all on sale this week at your local Honda dealer. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USASwimmingFoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. 
The world is a beautiful place again. Join the voices for recovery. For confidential information for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. ABC7, the Suncoast's official Florida lottery station. 